speaker is a recent UF grad from the Energy Systems Engineering and Entrepreneurship Program. He recently co-founded a residential energy efficiency startup. Please welcome Stephen Sherman. Ask anyone the top 10 problems facing society for the next 50 years, I'm willing to bet they generate a list similar to this. What I'm not willing to bet is that they would agree with me when I say one of these problems, energy, is the key to unlocking the entire puzzle. What the world needs most is clean, low cost, and abundant energy. A resource that can increase standard of living, desalinate water, um, improve our food production, and restore the environment. And the world consumes a lot of energy. More specifically, about 250 million barrels of oil per day. This is equivalent to 20 lights, light bulbs per person on the entire earth constantly lit, or the unit I'm gonna to use today, 16 and a half terawatts, which is what we're consuming right now. Now our energy sources of today are heavily dominated by fossil fuels, with over 85% of them coming from coal, oil, and natural gas. We have a small amount coming from carbon neutral resources, and even less coming from renewables. More importantly, energy needs of 2050 are scheduled to double to 28 terawatts in the low growth scenario. If we continue business as usual, they're going to close to triple at 45 terawatts. So what does this mean for our energy infrastructure? Well, if we want to maintain carbon dioxide levels at a safe level, it's going to be a lot of work. And this is an infrastructure that takes decades, if not generations, to make any significant change. What we're going to need is a 1,200% increase in energy from carbon neutral resources and an 88% reduction in energy from fossil fuels. And like I said, this takes a very, very long time to change. So what are some of our carbon neutral energy resources? Well, let's start with nuclear. Each nuclear plant is a gigawatt, which is equal to a thousandth of a terawatt. So unless we build one plant every day and a half, it's not going to meet our um, growing energy demand. Next, we have carbon capture, or basically burying carbon dioxide in the earth. And whether we do this at an industrial or a natural scale, there's almost no scalability given the magnitude of the problem. Next, geothermal. Even at um, our entire landmass covered in 100% efficiency, we're still only at 12 terawatts. We look at biomass and consider that we need to balance this with our food needs. We're looking at about one terawatt realistic. Hydroelectricity, which has been around for a long time, maximum of two terawatts. Wind is another resource that offers um, a low cost promise, but still, it's only two to four terawatts. So as you can see, if we want to meet even the low growth scenario of 28 terawatts, we're gonna need a big answer. The sun, 120,000 terawatts. In fact, enough energy from the sun reaches the earth in one hour to power all of mankind's energy needs for the entire year. But deployment has only been insignificant at best, at about 0.5%. Now, of course, solar won't be our only option as we need our energy demands to meet a variety of needs. But given the uh, order of magnitude of the problem, it's, it better be the majority. So what's the big problem? Why don't we have more solar? Well, it's primarily cost. Even with significant reductions in more recent years, solar is still easily two to five times as much as the next um, plausible generation sources. And while it's coming down a lot, it's still got a long ways to go. Another resource I didn't mention was the power of energy efficiency. Um, due to our infrastructure, for every unit of energy we consume at home, uh, nine more are wasted. There is positive to this since every unit of energy we save, we can save the other nine. So here we are, the sky is falling, the earth is warming, we have no energy security, prices are constantly rising, and our population is only growing um, very fast. But luckily we have a lot of great entrepreneurs working to tackle this huge problem. Opower was a company founded to help utility customers save money and energy through behavioral science. Basically they found that when you compare your energy usage to your neighbors, you really start to pay attention and change your behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It was a company I founded with Jack Dean out of the Masters of Entrepreneurship program um, to promote energy efficiency at home and um, drive home all the benefits to homeowners. While we're an early stage startup and have a long ways to go, it's something we're really passionate about and working hard on. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle is renewable energy deployment. 
The biggest problem I mentioned with solar was cost. Solar City used the innovative solar lease financing model to lower this cost, making it affordable and easy for every homeowner. These are just some of the options to a more sustainable energy future, but the biggest option we're not using is you. There'll be plenty of solutions and innovations to solve this terawatt problem. My goal is to make sure people are looking for them. Thank you.